All right, now that we've put guides around our inner background, the rest is going to be white. That's our border. I made a duplicate of it. Here it is. And I'm going to put that duplicate up at normal to 100% opacity. And then just like we can change the colors of our of our text, we can also change the color of our background just using layer styles. We can do a simple single color background. Maybe a light blue. We can gray that out. It's kind of like if it were on a light blue shirt, right? Um, we can play with other effects like satin, like inner glow. We can play with all of these settings. But the most basic way usually that I create a basic digital background is with color overlay, but I set it to about 50%. This is like a color that tones over whatever the background color is, like glazing. And then I'll go to gradient overlay, and I'll use these gradient dropdowns and figure out what I want. So maybe because this is kind of a bluish tint, ooh, cloud is interesting. <laughs> Those are very subtle. Or grays. You can kind of see these different options. That gray is pretty dramatic. Some darker ones. And then, of course, we can modify this completely. So that's a gray that goes to kind of a cool gray. But I can flip it. I can say reverse. So it's darker on the bottom. It's a linear gradation at 90%, so it goes straight down. That's pretty nice. I can play with the scale of it, so how subtle or how strong it is. I can also adapt it. I can add any color I want, like right in the middle. Maybe I put something warmer. And, of course, I can steal the colors right from the image as well. And because our campus colors are green and blue, might make sense to have some, somewhat of a match there. But then this is the thing that students don't usually think to play about, play with. I can play with the blending mode within these layer styles as well. So I can do things like dissolve and then take the opacity down to give it a little bit of that grainy texture. I can do that with color overlay as well. Instead of normal, I can have it as dissolve. And it looks really crazy on the screen. But when you zoom in, these are two different dissolves layered together, and they give you what basically is a really pleasing textured flat color. Now, what if I want another gradient on top of that? I can make a duplicate, and then I can turn off all the effects on that duplicate, and use my selection to go within my bounds so I'm not bleeding into my borders. And then this is a, a new tool for us. Instead of using the paint bucket that we use for digital coloring, I can use the gradient tool that's above the paint bucket. And just like the gradient layer style, I can set my gradient right here. And let's do something really, really crazy. Usually you'll have like a rainbow option here. In this newest version of Photoshop, they give us iridescent. And so this gives us some of the, the crazy options, right? So what about something like that? Uh, it's not that interesting. Something with a lot of colors there, but then I can change each of these. And I can always add to them. And I can even play with finding the in-between color of these mess with them in different ways. There we go. And spread them out different ways. Maybe dull, dull this a bit. Okay, so if I like that, now this is what's fun about the gradient tool, is I can paint that as real pixels at any angle I want. So let's try this. And then I can take that opacity down and layer that on top of what I have. Right? And then I can do that again, new layer, 
it's only going to paint within the areas I've selected. And now I can paint it upside down from a different angle. Maybe this way. Right? And then I can play with opacity there. Or with a different blending mode. So basically, it's like I'm painting a sunset. And I need all of these to, to make it work. If I hit Command-D to deselect, if I hit Command-Semicolon to get rid of my guides, that's a, a background created by me, right? just with some of those digital tools that has texture, that has a lot of interesting color variation. And now I might decide to customize the color of my type to go with that background. Right. Another thing you can do is simply composite backgrounds in. So you can do a Google image search and you can look for interesting textures. And because they're just gonna be used as a texture, like if I wanted to use a sunburst, I can go to tools, I can look at ones that are large and don't have watermarks, right? You can find things like this. I like this site, freepick.com. It's a large image, I'm gonna save it. First I'll check it, make sure it doesn't have any watermarks, looks clean, move it into my assignment folder. <clears throat> because I might want to use that for other projects. And then I can move it in as a background, stretch it out, hold down shift to distort it. It will lock to my guides. <clears throat> and then I can use different blending modes to let that come in. Like one option would be pin light, which gives me a little bit of that texture into the image, very subtle. Maybe I duplicate it, and then use something like, let's see, do I want to lighten it or darken it? I like the darken. Yeah, so you can see it has those little kind of cloudy waves and yet all my color is still in there and all my texture is still in there with the variations of that wrinkled brownish paper. Of course, I can play with the opacity of it as well, decide how much of that I want to come through. And there are any number of textures. So this is a background I created by compositing two sources I created. You know, this one from scanning from different sources then playing with color, sometimes erasing things. And this one on normal mode. But then if I use a blending mode, it combines the two into its own thing then I can just change the color of certain elements. What if I wanted to take this image, right? So what I would do is just very quickly flatten it or merge visible, select it all, copy it, then paste it here. And I can transform it. Use shift to make it fit my borders. And maybe even go beyond them, depending what I'm looking for. And then if I wanna get rid of that black border and replace it with my white, I can simply use my magic wand. So all that compositing 
is very useful. So contiguous turned on. Let's just get rid of this. It definitely gives that vintage look. Right? <coughs> then let's fit it in a little bit better. And I have to get rid of all that black that was cropped out. And then if I want to clean it up further, I can just use my rectangular marquee tool to sharpen it up on all sides. And then like any background, I can layer that with opacity on what I had underneath it. <laughs> and play with different blending modes as well. Kind of nice. And then, of course, I can play with the direct adjustments. So if it's too saturated, right, I can take that down. If I want to shift the hue, do that. Make it overall brighter or overall lighter. warm it up a little. Now all those things are coming together just to give me kind of this old west textury paper feeling. You can even, let's see, do something a little weird. And I'm going to take my my illustration group with the text, I'm going to duplicate it, and then I'm going to merge that group so it's all one flat image. And then I'm going to take that, select with my magic wand, contiguous unchecked, all the empty space. And then I'm going to take that, reverse it, select the inverse, that's so all the inside space, and then erase that from that overlay background. So it's a little bit brighter. And so then when I put the image on top of it, it will feel to kind of glow out from there. I could always just erase as well. So lots of things to play with. And a low opacity, a big brush. When we do digital painting, the next assignment we'll learn all about customizing brushes. But anywhere I want it to kind of lighten around my type, I can do that in subtle ways. Okay, now, now I've got enough of that background kind of figured out that I can play with coloring the type. So that's my red and my orange. So far I have a stroke and an overlay color on it. So let's play with that. Let's go back to the effects. Let's give it some texture. I like to use the water options. And then you can play with the scale of that and the depth of it. Really small. I can play with the color overlay, dim that down just like I did with the background about 50%. Go to gradient overlays. I can play with different options. Keep it warm. I can play with the stroke. Maybe have it be light instead of dark. 
play with drop shadows. 